doing some technical climbs over this little scree field here. And the rear shock just eating that up. Okay, first section. Why did I buy a Trek Slash? Um, so the easy answer is uh, brand loyalty. I've been riding Trek for over 10 years. They had me uh, with my first Hi-Fi um, and I bought several remedies to them and a couple of Excaliburs. And uh, sadly, you know, about a year ago, I was riding in a Mammoth on the Remedy and I just felt like something was wrong. And I didn't realize at the time, but a crack was forming. And uh, so uh, I'm glad I listened to my instincts though. And I had ordered up this uh, beautiful rig um, back in December. And so roughly April, um, I took a little bit of air out at, um, uh, you know, Phoenix and snapped the frame, uh, right, kind of right before the weld there on the um, chainstay. So uh, Trek said, you know, yes, it had a lifetime warranty, but we don't make this bike anymore and there's no spares. So how about we uh, give you 1600 bucks off on this bike and uh, a free top of the line wave cell helmet. So, um, so there you go, brand loyalty. Specifically, as far as um, why I went for the, um, for the Slash is, uh, you know, if you look at all the specs, um, this is sort of the modern equivalent of what the Remedy was back in the day. You know, it's, um, it's a downhill bike that you can ride to the top. And uh, as far as, you know, carbon and everything, carbon wheels, carbon everything, I, you know, I wanted to treat myself. I rode a bike for eight years, I went about halfway around the world on that bike, if you work up uh, all the mileage. And, uh, you know, at that point, uh, I wanted the best uh, money you could buy. So that is why I picked the Slash. Got some good switchbacks here. Gonna put down the dropper. Dropper's out of the way now. And now we're gonna we're gonna do some switchbacks. I find the steering more than up to the job, even though the wheelbase on this rig is actually a couple inches longer than it was on the remedy. Squeeze between these trees. More switchbacks. And you can hear, I had mentioned that the codes do make a bit of a turkey gobble. You can hear them doing their job there. Okay, let's do some technical specs. Uh, this is a Trek Slash 99. I ordered it through Project One, which means um, I had the opportunity to not only to customize the components, but um, pick the paint job. And so I went with uh, orange and black accents, whereas Fred's new rig is black with orange accents, which I think is pretty cool. Um, this is uh, a carbon frame. Everything is carbon, even the um, rear triangle. And uh, Trek calls this uh, OCLV carbon. So uh, I ordered up uh, a large frame after I went into a uh, land of cyclery and they uh, measured me out and we compared it to the table that Trek provides on their site and it recommended a large for me. So um, brought it in a Trek factory orange with the black accents, got the slash there. And um, I chose um, not to uh, have my custom name put on the bike because there was a small possibility that when it arrived at um, Landis that I might not like it. And uh, if they wanted to throw it on the floor and sell it, they said it would be harder if it had a custom name. So we'll put that on with some uh, decals soon enough here. And so let's give it a little bit of a walkthrough here. Um, this comes with, the bars are called Line Pro Carbon. They're 35 millimeter. And this is a Bontrager component. I, of course, have put on um, the Ergon grips because that's the only kind of grip I like. And the front shock here is the RockShox Zeb. And um, this is 170 millimeter. You can put a 180 on this bike if you want to, according to the Trek site. I've put 203 millimeter ice rotors and um, in case you guys don't know, the ice rotors are a bimetallic metal compound that prevents the rotor from tacoing when you dump too much heat into it. And so 
when you're really braking hard on steel rotors, some of you may have noticed that if you dump too much heat in, they permanently taco and they'll make a terrible noise when they're going through the um, calipers there. So um, these prevent that. I'm also riding the code brakes from SRAM. And this is a quad piston brake. And you can see that the brake and um, shifter combo kind of goes onto the same bracket. So it frees up a little bit of space on the bars. And we're running the Line Pro 30 carbon rims. And that was a bit of an upgrade that I did um, when I ordered the bike. Um, I discarded whatever tires that came. Um, although, you know, I know the, the Bond Triggers have a respectable reputation, but uh, I've been riding the, uh, the Minions for years. And so I slapped on the Minion DHF on the front, uh, 2.6, and the DHRs on the rear, 2.6. And of course, uh, Fred introduced me to the Timber Bell, so I slapped that on there. And the original stem was um, a 50, and I found the bike to be a little bit twitchy, so I upgraded to a Race Face 80 almost immediately after getting the bike, and that seemed to calm the twitchiness a bit. Uh, you can see I've got my computer mount on here. Because the stem is so short compared to the Remedy, I had to um, have them mount up this extra little kind of an outboard rigger for the Garmin. It seems to work fine. I don't hit my knees on it. The only downside is um, this bike does come with what they call a knock block, which prevents the, um, the entire tire from rotating or the headset from rotating like more than, I don't know, 90 degrees or something. But basically it was originally designed to prevent you from messing up the carbon. If you turn too sharp, you didn't want to hit this portion of your shocks on the carbon, but um, the knock block can be removed if you don't like that, and they've also resolved that uh, mechanical issue anyway. So, all right, uh, we've got some armor on the down tube here, and uh, one thing I really like is you notice that it is replaceable with screws on the Remedy. It was uh, epoxied on and kind of always looked sort of crappy and half on in my opinion. Um, so the rear shock here is called the Rock Shock Super Deluxe Ultimate Debonair. Um, and it is uh, custom manufactured for Trek. Um, you can discard this shock and put on a standard commercial shock if you want to. Okay, the, um, I had this thing mounted up with an MRP. It's a combination chain guide and a bash guard. So you can see the, the bash guard there. And then here's the chain guide, and you can see that uh, it does go from uh, anywhere from a 32 tooth to a 28. Um, I'm presently running a 28 tooth um, on the drivetrain. And uh, for those of you that think that's sacrilege, because this is a 28-52 combo, um, come up here and ride Crested Butte, where they average 17% uh, grades on a lot of these rides. Um, it's been perfect for me. The drivetrain is uh, the SRAM. It's an X01. So similar to the Eagle that I was riding, except even better. And I found um, the uh, the shifting on the X01 to actually be uh, even crisper and more responsive than the Eagle was. Barely, but but it is better, uh, I'll admit. The chain is still an Eagle uh, chain, same chain as, as the original drive chain. Uh, it's, it is a 12 speed, a 12 by, uh, or one by 12, sorry. And um, I uh, put on my Shimano Saint pedals uh, also running the the SRAM X01 175 millimeter cranks uh, same uh, line pro uh, 30s in the rear carbon wheel and um, also put a 203 millimeter uh, rotor in the rear and we've got um, droppers here this is uh, also it's a uh, called a dropper line elite it's a 170 and uh, the diameter 34.9 millimeter. And um, I will, uh, in a separate section here, I'm gonna go over the stuff that I like and that I don't like about the bike. So I'm gonna reserve any uh, um, editorial about that until a later section. And uh, finally, uh, those of you who watch our channel, um, you know that Fred is really, he's really the numbers guy. Like mostly I like to throw a leg over a bike and I just see if I like it, right? So I'm not, 
super into the numbers, so you can um, go to the link that I will supply in this video and you can check all of the geometry numbers for yourself. But for those of you that just have to know, um, at least two numbers that baffle me but seem most important to a lot of people, the effective seat tube, ang seat tube angle is 76.1 degrees and the head angle is 64.6. Uh, and this bike does come with a chip. Um, so if you want to chip it, you can change those numbers around a little bit. And there we go. I'm making better time than on the Remedy. I'm picking up so much time on this bike, I'm finding I'm having to grab some brake around these berms. I'm not used to that. Okay, lightning round. Uh, we're going to talk about what I like and I don't like um, about the Slash now that I've been riding it for roughly a month. Um, okay, so likes. Uh, I really like the um, X01 shifters and uh, drivetrain. So uh, crisp, responsive, quick. Um, you you basically just uh, never get any missed gears. Um, I'm riding a 2852 and um, yes, clutch your pearls, but uh, here in Crested Butte, that's a perfect riding gear for me. Uh, I like the Super Deluxe Ultimate rear shock. It's very responsive. There's a million settings for it, but it's been perfect for me. I've already taken it to the bike park, done technical climbs and descents with it. I'm really loving the um, the Rock Shock Zeb. It's a um, beautiful shock. You can do the high speed and low speed compression and um, all kinds of settings there. Um, not super wild so far uh, about the, um, the Line Pro bars. Uh, maybe I could have a little bit of a steeper sweep, may end up replacing those, we'll see. Um, I had already mentioned that I ended up replacing the um, stem with a, a slightly longer, just a one centimeter longer stem, and it's a race face, and i um, loving it. It smoothed out the twitchy, twitchiness that I was uh, experiencing when I first got the bike. Um, I love the MRP chain guide and uh, bash guard combo. Um, I'm liking the cranks. Um, the code brakes, I'm halfway on the fence. Uh, they have beautiful modulation and i um, happy with the control and the braking power combined with the ice rotors. What I'm not super super wild about is the turkey gobble that I get from these things and it's completely random even though um, I changed out the pads because maybe I thought I contaminated them on the drive up here from Arizona. Uh, but um, you know they're good uh, enough so I'm probably going to stick with them and uh, Finally, uh, the dropper. I love the dropper. I hardly would characterize it as um, I could not ever ride again without one. Uh, that's ridiculous. You know, I, uh, I like it. It's a nuance. I find myself using it, uh, but hardly uh, in a situation where I could uh, go without. And uh, finally, um, I like the, uh, the internal routing on the cables. It's nice and clean. And finally, a um, few things I don't like uh, that I'm Super, super not particularly impressed with is um, I did notice a little bit of orange peel on the paint job down there inside that well. And uh, for this price point, I think it was a little sloppy on Trek's part. And um, also I have noticed that this little well down in here, um, it does kind of catch grit. So it would have been nice maybe if Trek could have put like, I don't know, a drain hole in there or something. It doesn't actually seem to cause any problems. It doesn't, you know, catch any grit up on the shock itself or on the stanchion. So, you know, it's not causing any trouble, but um, it does seem to be a bit of a trap there for dirt. Um, so uh, in the knock block, uh, I'm neutral. I don't care. It, it uh, hasn't gotten in my way and it hasn't helped as far as I can tell. So um, it's just fine for now. And uh, lastly, I guess uh, the carbon uh, as a whole. Um, I know this is going to be terrible. I feel bad, you guys, but... Uh, I, I don't, I don't ride around feeling like, whoa, I'm riding a carbon bike. Um, you know, I, uh, the previous remedy was an aluminum frame and I was running the, uh, DT Swiss, uh, FRs, which was a phenomenal wheel set. So that was a full aluminum build. And 
I don't feel like I'm riding this bike saying, oh my gosh, I'm on carbon. Uh, it's fine. I like it. It's, um, you know, 33 pounds, pedals to the top, easy. Um, love the gearing ratio. So, uh, but uh, I, I'm not riding the carbon just saying, wow, this is carbon. It's uh, completely different for me. So there we go. Likes and dislikes. Okay, guys, we're going to do a little bit of black hair, black diamond. Catching a little chop. Okay, there's a feature here that I have learned the hard way. It has some pretty gnarly rocks at the end. But no trouble on the slash. She's eating these down jerks up. No trouble. Got some more tech here. I like the right hand line. Again, I like the right hander here. Tech. Should have taken the right hand line, but trouble on the jumps take some aggressive downhill here that one I blew likes eating this stuff for breakfast. She's doing better than I am. Time for one more ride. Okay, guys. Burning question. If I had had a chance to ride this bike for a month instead of ordering it unridden, would I still have bought one? And the answer is yes. I absolutely would have bought the Slash if I'd had a chance to ride it first. Of course, now that I've ridden it, I am very grateful that I bought it. Wonderful rig in every way better than the um, Remedy that I used to ride. Of course it would be. It's a newer generation. Beautiful rig. I like the code brakes. Good power, good modulation. Love the drivetrain. The combination of um, the debonair fork the ultimate Zeb and um, the rear uh, reactive shock, just a beautiful combination. Handled the brake bumps, handled the chop, did some wall rides, did some droppers, did some tech on some of those black diamonds. Beautiful rig. Does everything I want. I can climb to the top with it. I can descend like a banshee. Fantastic bike. 
I definitely highly recommend this rig. I bet you thought I would forget to talk about this. This is Trek's in-frame storage solution. So you can put stuff in the frame instead of a bag, which would interfere with your dropper. So let's find out what's in here. Take off this little door and, oh, look at that. We have a neoprene bag in here for holding stuff. And let's find out what we got going on in here. So, um, okay, so we have um, a chain tool and we have a multi-tool and oh look at that we've got a miscellaneous bag of parts that um, I took off of Fred's bike when he wasn't looking I wonder how long it'll take him to notice